How's it going, YouTube? Southern experience here. On my way home. Smoking my bearded yard. One of them. Uh, pretty nice uh, rustication on this one. Got little designs in there. It's an estate pipe I got off of eBay. Uh, I think this is uh, what they call egg shape billiard. Uh, let me know, I guess. Comment down below. Tell me what you think. Anyway, uh, Mass Masteria, Mysteria, Deluxe. Not real sure. It's hard to read. In it, smoking some uh, Devil's Holiday. About halfway through the bowl. Smoked it on my way into work. Uh, decided I'm going to start uh, smoking them a little while before I tell you what I think. Because a lot of them that I, I've tried, they start out really good. But my concern is, you know, as in most things, it's not exactly how you start always. But a lot of times how you finish. And, but, and I'm going to apply that in my personal to pipe journey. Ooh, sorry about the sun there jumping out at you. Uh, this stuff, lit it up. Tasted pretty good to start with. Right away, huge, huge cherry taste. And then it turned to black cherry taste. And I usually don't look up on, you know, reviews until I've tried it for myself. I want to make sure I form my own opinion about it. A lot of you guys try stuff, you review it. And I like watching those reviews, and I usually based on whether or not I want to try something on those reviews, but a lot of times you just got to try it yourself and see how you like it. And so that's what I'm doing with Devil's Holiday. I've only, I think, seen one review on it, and I don't even remember how it went. But uh, anyway, uh, like I said, it started really black cherry, had to let it go out while I was inside stunk up my Suburban. And, of course, you know, most tobaccos, they'll put up kind of a pungent smell while they're sitting there, but this kind of just stunk. Like I'm a two-pack-a-day smoker. Uh, cigarette smoker. Um, but, you know, got the windows down, letting it air out. Or turn down a little bit. Uh, Ooh, got some of that nasty nasty condensation so I relit it after work and uh, after it sat for a bit and I smoked it slow it got kind of hot kind of harsh on the throat a little bit of a hit in the mouth on the top on the palate uh, but it, it the whole time it was nothing but black cherry and uh, had a really good flavor but it always had that hit on it, kind of a harshness to me. Uh, and once that black cherry flavor, to me black cherry, uh, wore off, you could kind of taste the tobacco and it didn't taste like an extremely high quality tobacco as some others that I've, it, not as high quality as some of the others that I've tried. And uh, sorry, I'm, I'm shouting. I just have a bad habit. I think everything's too loud. Um, but, uh, it was all right, mm, worth a try. I'll put it th that way. Um, you know, everybody's tastes are different, so you know, be worth a try. I don't necessarily know that I personally will go out and buy any, or uh, you know, go to it as an everyday smoke. You know, if I really want a cherry hit, good one to go to. Um, but it is an aromatic. Virginia and Cavendish. I went after I started smoking it. Went to the review site, checked it out, seen what it was made of and how they describe it, and ran on to one view. And the one view said he liked it a lot, but and that's where I stopped. I didn't want to read anybody else's reviews. I was on my phone, so I don't really pay attention to when I hit it. I was just reading along. But uh, it's okay uh, for me, you know, 
like I said, a really awesome black cherry taste. If they all would leave the taste in your mouth that that one did, you know, give you the flavor like that one did, boy, I don't, I think I'd be a chain pipe smoker. But, um, you know, once again, it sat for a bit. I, I, I have made it a, a practice that if a pipe goes out and has to sit because of getting busy, get interrupted, whatever the case may be, that I, when I come back to relight it, I'll dump the top ashes out. And that has worked really well for me. Um, I get rid of them because I don't want that to affect the relight flavor. And I've noticed that for me that that happens. And so um, I, I dump the top, burn ashes out, all the loose stuff, to where I get down to basically somewhat new, you know, it's been smoldered, but it's not cooked or burnt tobacco. And so I'll get past the ashes and, and then uh, start, you know, usually don't take much to get there. Uh, and then start over and that usually gives me the fresh flavor again the startup flavor again pretty good works for me uh, been working on that breath smoking technique and that has really paid off I uh, was about ready to give up on lane 1q I know I know don't excommunicate me just yet uh, don't shoot me don't hate me uh, I know everybody loves lane 1q and I that's where I started was lane 1q and but I never could figure out why at the end of the bowl uh, always was harsh and ashy and had a nasty aftertaste. Well, I'm learning through suggestions, through watching your guys' videos. Uh, you know, I've learned that I need to slow down and quit trying to smoke like a freight train. Uh, it just kind of became a habit. And so I've slowed down. I take my time on it. I keep it going without keeping it hot. And I'm continually working on that. And I did that with Lane 1Q today. The last bowl that I had of it um, and it was really good all the way through never got ashy tasting never got burnt tasting never got harsh it stayed pretty decent flavor all the way down it was actually quite an enjoyable smoke and uh, so that's uh, you know it, it start that breath smoking that that Leslie Russell told me about you know you know shot me a comment on and said try this check check out circular breathing and breath smoking and you know it's paid off and I suggest if you haven't uh, if, you know tried it out hey it you know it worked I think it would work for veterans and amateurs like myself alike and uh, it's really awesome really relaxing um, works great for me uh, give it a try but um, uh, so out of lane 1Q, but that's fine. I got lots of other tobaccos to smoke, and when I get back around to, you know, buying bulk again, then uh, I may get some of that, you know, buy a good bit because there's some that I'd, uh, I'm, I'd like to use to blend down. Uh, others that, you know, I just like to smoke it by itself. But I got plenty of tobacco right now because of that pipe tobacco month of the month club. Uh, and that's pretty much my budget right now because that's 20 bucks a month and uh, I get uh, two tins of tobacco some bulk tobacco and a pouch and then a really junk China cob I mean one of them I got the bottom was blowed out of it but they're they're good for tasting that's all they're good for you can barely get your pinky down in them but um, I mean the tobacco alone's worth it and I added up the cost you're literally paying for what you're getting you're not getting a, an extreme deal you're not I mean you're getting it for book value book cost you're just not getting a whole bunch of tax thrown onto it so the tax doesn't add up to it but I mean you're you're getting it if you go through the catalog or go through the website from pipes and cigars you're literally getting it for what they advertise the price at without the tax um, or at least maybe they discount it and figure the tax in I don't know but um, pretty good deal you, you know I got a big I mean a big tin of uh, Morecambe Riff uh, that I'm gonna save that and uh, another one I can't remember what the name was Dan's tobacco I can't remember what the, what it was but anyway I uh, set them aside for the tin pass I have eight tins of unopened tobacco set aside and hopefully I'll have a couple more that maybe I can throw into that mix for when the tobacco pass gets around but uh, thanks, Steve L. again for the sample. Great to try a new tobacco. Um, like I said, worth a try. And uh, decide for yourself. 
and uh, you know everybody, you know everybody's got their opinions on what they like what they don't like and I'm learning that you know you guys may love a tobacco like the plum pudding everybody loves the plum pudding didn't work for me um, and I found out it's it, it wasn't because it was wet it was really the right moisture I you know I tried to slow down on it smoked it in a briar and a cob but I found out it's got perique in it and I not a perique fan and uh, I don't like the bite I don't like the spice of it not my cup of tea but I'm gonna pass it on let somebody else give her a try because everybody else seems to like it so I'm gonna give it to somebody you know pass it on to a new guy or somebody uh, that you know I can pass some samples out on to um, you know so then somebody else can enjoy it um, I'm getting my taste down getting them figured out but uh, you know that's what it's all about right finding what I what you enjoy what you like to smoke what your palate says is good and uh, you know you move on from there right and uh, I'm glad you guys we all have uh, and that's why they make so many different types of uh, tobacco you know that's why you know it's not all the same not all the same flavor not all the same style not all the same recipe uh, but yeah so I'm really excited to keep finding stuff that is fitting what I like and uh, I found about 10 different ones so far that fall into that lineup and so it's getting really hard to narrow it down to an everyday smoke and I may never get an everyday smoke that's fine with me new and everyday life will never stay life will never get boring and it'll always stay interesting and something always different and so but um, anyway uh, you guys take care and uh, we'll talk to you later keep them lit guys bye